Hello and welcome to another Dungeons and Dragons Online preview. I am Druid's Fire and I'm here to tell you to talk to the hand. It is time to review or preview the goodies you get when you purchase Vecna Unleash, the upcoming expansion for the venerable D&D uh, &D MMO. Uh, and why am I saying talk to the hand? Well, the key art. Let's take a look at that, shall we? Boom. Talk to the hand. The hand of Vecna. God of secrets. Anyway, let's go over a few things before we do anything else. We're hanging out on Orion uh, right now. Because I'm going to show you how to get your goodies. Because... Vecna Unleashed does pretty much the same thing that most of the recent expansions have done, uh, starting with Saltmarsh, in, uh, in that you have to go to an NPC to get uh, a number of your goodies. However, some of them you don't need to do that, um, because they now set it up so that uh, pets and mounts automatically go into your stables, um, so that's really, really cool. Uh, anyway, let's go over the uh, the frequently asked questions about this, if we can here. Boom. All right, Vecna Unleashed, there is an FAQ on DDO.com that you can read. Can you purchase Vecna Unleashed with store points? Um, March 2024. Uh, this is not unusual. Uh, Standing Stone and then Turbine previous to that would uh, allow people to buy expansions with points some months after the expansion launches. Um, <clears throat> and on here, as you can see, the expansion will cost $19.99. We're going to party like it's $19.99. Uh, the actual content, which is the quests, the monster manual, number nine, number nine, uh, will be 595 points. The plus one tome of universal enhancement, Morgrave, is going to be... Um, 3,495 points. And finally, <clears throat> the Macro Technic Epic Destiny is going to be 995 points. Now, the NPC you're going to want to talk to is Macrawl, a dragonborn located in the Clifftop District of Sharn near the airship to Morgrave University. And I'll show you how to find them here in just a few moments. Macrawl is uh, as dragonborn. You may speak to Macrawl at any time to claim your Vecna Unleash purchase items. Uh, and on here, how many quests, raids, and such are in Vecna Unleashed? 13 quests, one raid in a public area. The raid will be available a short time after re release. That's not unusual. Uh, here's a question that I had because the purchase page didn't make this clear. And this is actually really cool. Is the Vaunt Arcane Assistant 2.0 Sentient Jewel one per character or one per account? Now, I had asked that of Cordovan when I first saw the listing of what was on here, and he did not have an answer at that time. But the answer is officially, every single one of your character can get one if you buy the version that has it. Oh my god, I threw away my stuff. How do I get more? You can reacquire items associated with your purchase by speaking to McCrawl again. Basically, McCrawl has all your goodies. Do I need to speak to someone to get your creature companions and steeds? Nope. They will automatically be assigned to your account. All nice and neat. What level is the Were Rat Rogue Hireling Darling? Um, the heroic one is level 18. The legendary one is level 32. Honestly, they need to put a Rogue Hireling that's somewhere between 25 and 30 in the, in the store or something. Anyhow. <coughs> is the additional character bank space available to only one character? Yes. Make sure to claim the 20 character bank slots on the character you wish to acquire the space for. Is Monster Manual number 9 available on every character on your account? Yup! Alright, is the Macro Technic Epic Destiny available to every character on your account? Yup! But of course you need to be level 20 in order to begin your Epic Destiny selection. What do I need to do to access my Macro Technic Epic Destiny? Travel to the Junction of the Spheres and acquire it by speaking to Edmund in the Arcane Sphere. Hmm. So that's the FAQ. And let me get that out of the way. Whoop. Oh no. Well, I'm, I'm going. Well, we're going to go to the uh, the Junction of the Spheres in just a moment. I need to turn my game on. Boop. Here I am. I was actually hoping it would turn to daylight so we could actually see the uh, stuff pretty soon. 
But let's go to the junction of the spheres first and uh, go check this out before we go to Sharn to go talk to our dude. <clears throat> now, the interesting thing is uh, I apparently, like, I went to my Epic Destinies on this character and I have it unset and apparently I can click it, but I don't have any points available, so I can't choose anything. Um, but you can still take a look at it and see what's what. So this is the final version. The, as you can see, Macro Technic is available right now as soon as you make your purchase, which is really cool. Um, this character will not be using it most likely. She's actually an Arcane, uh, well, she's a Arcanotechnic, uh, Artificer. Um, and from my understanding, this really isn't geared for Artificers per se. It is more geared for people who want to have some of the cool things Artis have, such as Rune Arm use. Mmm, Rune Arm use. Yeah, that's sexy. So, actually, let's take a quick look at the thing here since we're looking at it. Uh, Macro Technic, your first core is going to be Armored Augmentation. Uh, epic bonus to all spell DCs, plus 5 melee, plus 4 range, plus 15 hit points, plus 25 spell points, and plus 5 electric sonic rust repair and universal spell power. Mmm, sexy. Uh, level 23 gets you the option of plus 15% fortification and plus 3 to each healing amp. Your rune arms now benefit from maximize, empower, intensify spell metamagics if you own those feats. Does not cost spell points and you do not need to have the feats toggled on to gain their effects on rune arms. That's cool. Uh, level 26, you get access to another pretty much... The plus 15 fort and plus 3 healing amp. Uh, your ablative armor spell now blocks 20 points of damage per caster level with no cap. So if you're level 30, um, that's going to be 600 points of damage. That's sexy. Like that. Alright, armor and augmentation, the last one. If you're level 32, 20 points spent in the tree. Again, your plus 15 fort, plus 3 to healing amps, plus 15 exceptional bonus to armor class, your caster level with green arm shots, and now factors in bonuses from your epic and legendary knowledge feats. Pretty cool. So, we're going to go over this kind of quickly. Um, if you've you know, seen Stream Tom's video t breaking this down, he knows a lot more about what's cool and what's not in all of this happiness. But we just kind of want to take a look at it. Um, so, I kind of like Sprockets. I have a gnome in WoW named Sprockets. Um, your armor class, PRR, armor I, I'm going to freaking need that on the, uh, artificer I'm playing now. Holy crap, she's squishy. She's also the same build as this. All right, you're going to charge faster. Also really nice. Select an epic strike. You can either galvanic blast, electricity, mmm, sexy electricity, toasty zorch. Mending burst, which is very nice. Repairing people, um... I wonder how that works with non-mechanicals. Anyhow. Sonic Boom! <clears throat> Dealing 1d6 plus 6 sonic damage per caster level to all enemies nearby. Damage has no save! Second yeah, That's pretty cool. I like that. Alright, then we also have Fluidity. No longer contributes to Arcane Spell Power. Thank you. Uh, target non-boss is sealed with... Oh, Radiant Prison. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. Oh, uh, basically you're CCing somebody, but you can't attack them. Well, fair. Rune arm use. Always good. A hammer spell. Stop. Hammer time. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm going to get myself DMCH for that. All right. Tonquin's lightning hammer. Former hammer for your lightning strike pose in an area. Oh, that's so good. I like that. And, of course, the sonic Tonquin's thunder hammer. Hmm. I like that one, too. <laughs> okay, force field generator, uh, your destiny mantle with this, you get 15 repair amps and you absorb blah blah blah, all force piercing, bludgeoning, slashing, electric sonic, rust damage, and the kitchen sink, and increase to 15% if you're wearing a Rooney, nice. Alright, select a school, pick a school, abj, conj, evo, trans, mutation, alright, technique drive, you get plus three spell cost reduction. That's pretty cool. Efficiency. Flash drive. Flash drive. Come on, DDO people. That's hilarious. Flash drive is you're going to be a tank. And then, of course, speed drive is you get to shoot or hit a lot faster. Nice. All right. Up here, we got Stormcore. Heck yeah. Give you some more damage with your Rooney. 
Over here we have got imbue dice. Imbue dice are awesome. If you got a build that uses imbue dice. And then while using your Epic Destiny mantle, you get 5P and MRR. If you ring a Rooney, you get 10 instead. Ooh, interesting. All right. Magical recoil. Uh, add more spell power. That's really nice. I like it. Uh, your T4 meta magic school to focus on. You can improve in power. You can improve intensify, or you can improve maximize. Cost you fewer points. Heck yeah. All right, install a drive to enhance your rune arm blast. You can either go with echo drive. Echo, 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 echo. Um, <clears throat> take an additional sonic damage, or you can hit them with a spark drive and hit them with electric. So I'm seeing sonic or electric, sonic or electric. Hmm. All right, I'm thinking. I, I have an idea. Okay, strike drive. Oh, uh, this one is. <clears throat> now, stuns enemy, your epic strike, for three seconds, assuming they fail the fort save. And if you're using the electric epic strike, it also supercharges you. Gives you plus 30% action boost to movement speed. Uh, hello. Uh, dissonance drive is a, uh, now confuses enemies. We're very confused. Assuming they fail. And they take uh, three stacks of vulnerability and three stacks of armor destruction. Okay, that would work with somebody using Fate Singer, I think. Kind of melding those two together. And Ruin Drive. Uh, disassembles enemy constructs. Give them rust damage. And you get negative one to your meta magic cost for five seconds while you're supercharged. Interesting. Alright, and the capstones up here. If you go into the capstones. Plus one to all spell DCs up to plus three. Pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> plus one crit malt on a roll of 19 to 20 weapons while wearing a Rooney. Um, Armor of Legends. The Epic Mage Armor Feeds bonus is now untyped and grants you plus one AC per character level. Furthermore, based on your installed drives, you gain the following bonuses. If you have Speed Drive, you get plus five action boost to attack. Efficiency and Movement Speed, uh, Flash Drive, uh, plus ten to PR and MR. Ruin Drive, Spell Power Saves, uh, Tactics, Energy, and Bonus of Dice. Interesting. Okay. All right, and maximum overdrive. <clears throat> this one was really interesting uh, because this is the one where the devs asked the, the community, what do you want us to do with this thing? We have this thing, but we don't know what we want to do with it. And so people threw out their ideas, and this is what they came up with. This grants you 100% boost to rune arm charge speed and cooldown, 50% reduction spell cooldowns, 30% extra boost to attack. Holy shit, this is a thing. And yeah, yeah, it's a thing. Thief Kitty agrees with me. And finally, force field generator. Using your macro technic epic destiny mantle, you gain plus 10% insight bonus to maximum hit points. While you have a Rooney, it goes to 20. Mmm, that would be, mmm, that would be tasty. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the macro technic epic destiny. Just explaining what it is and what it does, but it doesn't actually tell you if it's any good or not. Um, I'm going to go into Strim's Discord real quick. Um, and I'm going to go see what he actually said about it, because he did say something about it, um, about whether he thought it would be good, because I had a particular interest with one of the things that he said that it would work well with, <clears throat> which is the single f weapon fighting paladin. <clears throat> and I'm thinking of the Blade Forge Paladin build that he has up uh, using the Dynastic Falcata, and I kind of want to take a look at that. Yes, I want to kind of take a look at that. And see what's what there. Let me go back and see what he had said. Um, I'm sure he's going to talk about this on his own stream, so I don't feel bad about saying because there's like 5 billion people in this. So Macrotech is very, very mid on Artificer, he says. But it's really, really good for Caster Bard, Lightning Sork, uh, Single Weapon Fighting, Paladin Barb, Rogue and Fighter, and any tank. He says it might be good for Artificer too, but testing will tell. So... That's Strim Tom's opinion, and I generally, you know, whether you agree with him or not, um, you know, generally he knows what the hell's going on far more than I do, so uh, I take his opinion as an expert opinion. <clears throat> and now we're going to go talk to the Junction of the Spheres real quick. Um, even though it says I have it, um, we're, we're doing what the, what the paper says, right? All right, we're going to go talk to the nice Junction lady. I think you still have to unlock it before you can put points in, even if you had points available. So let's uh, go talk to Edmund, I was told, in the Arcane Sphere. Okay. Where's the Arcane Sphere? 
arcane sphere, isn't it? I think this one's the arcane sphere. Yeah. There we go. Arcane sphere. And here's Edmund, Macrotechnic. So here you go. Boop. By unlocking this destiny, you receive three fate points. Every three fate points grants you one permanent destiny point. Let's do it. Yay, it's officially unlocked. Hurrah. Now let's go to Sharn. Now you can talk to Captain, uh, what's his face, Albin Dranmore down by the, the, the harbor. Or if you are fortunate to have a teleporter, you just want to go to the Clifftop Tower District. Let us go. Zoop. Okay, now you can go to ddo.com and look at the pre-purchase webpage about Vecna Unleashed. Uh, it apparently does not really like displaying very well on uh, my uh, stream software right now. Uh, ddo.com expansions. All right. The three bundles are priced as you might expect. Uh, the standard edition is 20 bucks American, 1999, 20 bucks. You get the content, the monster manual, and the Epic Destiny. Uh, the Collector's Edition, uh, which you can upgrade from the, the lower one later on if you want to. Uh, Collector's Edition will include all of that stuff, plus the Academics Cosmetic Outfit Set, the Warforged Owl Pet, and the Academic Steed, and the Were Rat Rogue Hireling, Rogue Heroic Hireling, the level 18 version of Darling the Were Rat. And that is for $59.99 or $60 bucks US. And finally, the Ultimate Fan Bundle, which of course is flagged as recommended because, hello, capitalism. Uh, you get all the stuff listed above, plus you also get the Ancient Lich Cosmetic Outfit Set, a Flame Skull Pet, the Ancient Lich's Steed, um, the Legendary Rogue uh, Wearer at Rogue Hireling as well, um, Character Bank for 20 slots, limit one per account, Account bank of 10 slots, so that goes for all of your characters, right? Uh, and then a Vault Arcane Assistant 2.0 Sentient Jewel, um, which, and the Teleport to Morgrave University. The last two items will be delivered when the expansion launches. Uh, and again, the expansion is due to launch on April, uh, April, goodness, August 16th. 2023 uh, subject to change because we all know how sometimes some things uh, can go awry with you know the fine print here um, <clears throat> so as they say in the fine print Vecna Unleashed uh, expansion is scheduled for release on August 16th in the event of delay you will receive the expansion content and items no later than November 16th uh, DDO uh, is available only in English after your purchase your account will automatically be updated based on the edition you purchased if you're logged into the game at the time of your purchase, you may need to log out and log back in before it takes effect. Uh, to receive your in-game items, log into the game. Any pets or mounts will automatically be applied to your stable of your inventory, which we already mentioned. Other in-game items can be claimed by speaking with the NPC McCrawl, who is located here in the Clifftop District of Sharn, near the airship to Morgrave University. <clears throat> Okay, so, again, the uh, Sentient Jewel and the Teleport item will uh, will come with the expansion at launch itself. And I do believe um, Cordovan has posted on the forums that Kira Buckland is the voice of the Arcane Assistant 2.0. Uh, and he added that other voice actors featured in the expansion include Misty Lee, Richard Reed, and Mark Oliver. Pretty cool. All right, so here in the cliff top, uh, here we go. Here's our dude, McCrawl Vector Unleashed Bundle Item Bender. So what you do here is you like to claim. I like to claim something, please. And you have a choice. You could choose if you only get the collector's edition, you get the collector's edition. If you want something from the ultimate, it'll just give you just the ultimate stuff. But well, it'll give you both the collectors and the ultimate. Uh, and then the final one is the one you want to be careful about. Uh, claim one of everything, including one item only items if available. Now, I've already claimed my one items only on my main, as I, you know, as you should all do. And then, so by clicking that, I'm just going to get, you know, both the collectors and ultimate with only having to click one thing. So, that's a thing. So, let's click the button. I have obtained a pile of things. So let's go see what things I've obtained. All right. And we're going to go to some place where it's sunny so you can all see. 
actually here is a perfect spot right here okay so first of all we're gonna start with no the ancient liches stuff is actually really cool um so you get one of these so i'm gonna use that bad boy real quick Zoop. all righty we're gonna get our academics hat going on and our cape and our academic robes going on here and before i do anything else let me put the horses down here so easy to get to where's the other one right here okay all right so this is the horse that matches All right, we're going to turn off our UI to get you up close and personal and zoom the camera around. Okay, so this is in the tradition of Lord of the Rings Online where the animal, the horse is wearing a tablecloth, but it's fine. It looks really cool. A little bit of arcane uh, stuff going here, little blue gems. Um, but, the, you know, this looks like a very nice comparison for a horse. And I love the fact that the horse itself is a palomino. It's really cool. Now let's get up close and take a look at the outfit. I actually shift and get off the, the horse so you can eh, let's take a look here and take a look at the outfit itself um, as usual with hats in many video games it's it does the weird thing with the brim let's shift around a little bit so we get a better view of the cloak in the sunlight so yeah very fancy um, I really dig the hat. The, the hat with the goggles on it. I mean, look at this hat with the goggles. It's so cool. Let's get a little closer. Look, look at that. Look at that. That's so cool. <clears throat> of course, nobody actually wears their goggles. And my 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 half-elf's ears is poking up out of the hat. That's funny. Okay, so that's the alchemist. I'm sorry, the... Um... <clears throat> That would be the academics outfit. All right, and let's go switch into the other set real quick. And this one is baller. This one, mm, you're gonna love this one. All right, look at this sexiness. Look at this, look at this mess. All right, let's turn around so you can see the back of the cloak. I mean, just look how fine the details are on this, right? This is so cool. And the animation of the little wavy bits, that that's that's pretty baller. The, the dev team had a lot of fun making this. And, oh, by the way, what does the horse look like? This is killer. It's a skeleton horse. Look at this. It's got, um, on the crown, it's got that little fiery bit, and the, <clears throat> mm, the dev team really, really outdid themselves on this one. Look at this mess. This is so good. I think the only, the only thing that I have a question about is why the horse doesn't have any red on it. Like, the outfit has all kinds of red on it, but the horse itself does not. So I, I have questions. I have questions. See, look at that. Look at that. Mmm. Look at those details. Can I scroll out, please? Thank you. I'd like to scroll out, please. Yeah. But horse butt. Anyhow, um, we'd already uh, I'd already done a little bit of a preview of the uh, wear wrap, but we're gonna hop into a quest real quick. Um, any old quest and show you. Let's actually go to Morgrave. Uh, I'll pop into one of the quests real quick, and I will show you the wear wrap. Uh, we'll use, nah. we'll do this one. It doesn't matter which version we do it on. I'm going to get healed anyway. All right. <clears throat> All right, let me go pop my wear rat. This is a level 32 wear rat. Darling. And so darling has your usual trapper skills. 
Uh, and Darling can also turn into a rat form. Uh, immune to all damage, monsters will ignore her, but her physical damage drops by 100%. And so it's like, I'm confused, but it's cute. I guess because, you know, nobody ever, like, with any of the other rogue hirelings, nobody ever used any of the, th only used the, the trapping skills and maybe this one. Uncanny dodge. <clears throat> so, now she's a rat. She's a cute little rat. Look at her, she's a cute little rat. There you go. So that's Darling, and Darling is a trapper, uh, a rogue hireling, so that's the thing. Let's get out of here. All right, so that pretty much goes over uh, the whole nine yards. I did actually not mention the price of the Ultimate Edition. It is $100, uh, $99.99 American. Um, so again, the expansion goes for Standard for $19.99, uh, Collector's Middle Edition, uh, $59.99, and Ultimate, $99.99. Uh, and if it's something you want, get it. If it's not something you want, wait for points. And the left is good. All right. <clears throat> Thank you all for watching. And, uh, you know, toss a like and subscribe, all that usual YouTuber thingy. And, uh, hope you have fun. Have a great time. And, again, don't forget. Don't forget. You need to do this. Everybody needs to do this. You all need to do this. You must not forget to... Talk to the hand. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Whoosh. Talk to the hand. <laughs> In Dungeons and Dragons Online. You can watch me on uh, twitch.tv slash DDO stream, the official Dungeons and Dragons Online channel. Uh, on Thursdays, uh, approximately 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the afternoon. Eastern whatever time. And yeah, uh, I'd love you to, to be there. Have a great one, and be kind to everybody except the bad guys and girls and other. Yeah. Fight the evil. Don't be the evil. Unless evil is fun, you know? No, it's not. All right. Bye now.